All right, the White House briefing any moment. Some big news right now that sort of turned this day upside down uh, on what was to be a, a discussion about the President's State of the Union address tomorrow, making overtures to, to Democrats, et cetera. News that uh, the uh, number two at the FBI, the Deputy Director, Andy McCabe, has stepped down, so that will likely dominate events. Uh, still, the President and, uh, as far as I can imagine, Sarah Sanders at least will kick things off talking about the good news that the President will do a little bit of crowing about, not the Dow today, but the Dow going into today that has been on a tear. Market Watchers Paul Schatz, Jonas Max Ferris. Jonas, um, you know, of course, there are all these different reads that the market can't sustain itself right here, that now interest rates are backing up. Another reason for investors to look elsewhere. That's the latest concern. What do you think? There's really, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the economy that would cause a crash, but there wasn't in 2000 and there wasn't in, in uh, 2007 either. And frankly, there wasn't really in 1929 or 1987. But the bottom line is, the market is up a lot. That graphic you just showed is kind of the, the probably the, the thing that scares people. It's like you think the music's going to stop. It's up a lot. Everyone knows it's up a lot. And you think it won't take a whole lot for people to start running for the doors. And they'll look for something to blame. It would probably, if short-term rates keep going up, you know, those are the rates which have gone up lately that you set auto loans on, that you set adjustable rate mortgages on, that you, you set credit card rates on. And they're going up right now. They haven't gone up a ton, but they're going up a lot relative to long-term rates. And if it continues because everyone thinks the economy is super hot, it could lead to a slowdown in the economy that corporate tax rate cuts, which we just got and are good, would not fix because there won't be any corporate earnings or, the, or corporate earnings will be going down if people stop buying stuff. You know, Paul, the other argument to keep this going is that these companies that are sharing the wealth with uh, not only their investors, but their customers in some cases and their workers is going to give another leg to this. Uh, what do you think? Well, this leg's not over yet, Neil, and I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take more than just a day or two pause to end this leg. This is a generational move, not in how much we're appreciating, but in the fact that there's been literally no volatility since February of 2016. So hmm. it, markets like this just don't stop overnight. And you're at this point where strength begets strength. The, the long-term economic impact and the long-term fundamental factors don't matter in a very short-term momentum-driven market. We haven't had a 5% decline in almost two years. You're going to have to get some kind of cessation of the rally first. And even a thousand point decline, which used to be this huge move, is not even 4% today. You're right. It's going to take time to really kill this leg, let alone the whole bull market. You know, Jonas, you mentioned something as well that I thought intriguing, and that is the idea that, you know, at the moment, there's nothing on paper that says a correction or a hit is coming. We learn after the fact and kind of dot the I's and cross the T's after the fact. But one thing that comes up, despite the, the interest rate backup we've alluded to before, is the fact that individuals are pouring into this market. Normally, when you see that, um, you know, uh, average folks are the last to join the party and the first to get drunk. Um, what do you think of that? I think it's more important than valuations. It's very hard to be like, oh, stocks are expensive. It means they're going to tank. I mean, it's not a good thing to buy into an expensive market. But really, where the average investor puts money is usually towards the end of a party. If you look at mutual fund flows like I do, going all the way back, you'd rather be investing into a market where people are pulling money out of stock funds, ETFs, et cetera, like in 2009, 2010, all the way through those years. In 2003, 2002, after that crash, you don't want to be in the hot market that everybody's like, wow, let's buy into tech funds now in 99 yeah. or uh, dividend funds or value funds in 06. So when you see investor enthusiasm and speculation, it's not at the levels it was in those years. I don't want to cause a panic, but it's definitely not. You're near the end of a party at that point. There's no more money left to come into the game at that point. And you see signs of speculation also in startups right now, in tech stocks, and then in this cryptocurrency bubble, which is probably almost as big as a subprime bubble, which caused a crash in the economy globally. You know, Paul, you could also look at this and say, well, timing is everything. If you've been riding or looking at a nine-year-old double market and uh, you're concerned you're getting in at the top, if you're going to be in the market for another 10, 15 years, perhaps it doesn't matter. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? No, Neil, I think it definitely matters. And if you think about it, there are many legs to a bull market stool. You know, one of the legs is valuation. But valuation or how expensive a market is, is a horrible timing tool. Val you know, markets get expensive in the 90s, in 95, 96, and that lasted, you know, another four or five years. Sentiment certainly used to be a very powerful contrarian sign that when the market gets too euphoric, people get too excited, stocks pull back. You're at the point where 
the market has steamrolled every single short-term sentiment study for the last 18 months. Again, it's generational. So even if I agree that you know, valuation is a bull market killer and sentiment is, you still have price, which is the final arbiter, price has done nothing wrong, and market internals and market leadership have done nothing wrong. So even if two legs of the bull market have been cracked, you still have these two powerful legs left. And until, really, until markets begin to stop going up or they begin to form cracks in the pavement, you have to buy weakness.